Hey guys and welcome back to a new video and a big new playlist which is all about Material 3. In this playlist I will show you all main Material 3 UI components, how you can use them in your code but most importantly how you can also stick to the Material 3 design guidelines. So this is really not meant to be a pure beginner playlist, it is for beginners but it's also for intermediate developers who now want to adapt to Material 3 to structure your app's UI and implement a UI that is very user friendly. And in this first video, I will go through the different types of buttons we have in Material 3. You can already see them here. This is the little app we will build. So in total, there are five different button types. And I will share how we can use them, how we can create them, and most importantly, in which scenario you should use which button type. I am here in an empty Material 3 Jetpack Compose product in which I will show you these different buttons now. So let's go inside of our surface. And in here, I want to create a little column where we will place our buttons. Column. We will give it a modifier of modifier fill max size. And we want to make sure that we center our content on the one hand, uh, what is it? Vertical arrangement center and horizontal alignment also center horizontally here. Now we can get into our buttons. And the most simple form of button or the most intuitive form is probably just the button composable. And you can also see down here, there are all these different types of buttons, which I will go through here. But I want to start with the most basic one, which is just a normal button. Then we get this on click lambda, which is just triggered when we click this button. So inside here, we can then react to click events. And then we get this little row scope here. So this is just um, the, the composables we put in here will be arranged in a row. So next to each other. And typically for a button, this is just used to um, paste in the text we want to show on that button. For example, subscribe confirm or something like that. And these normal buttons in Material 3 are also called filled buttons because they are just filled with a solid color. If we take a look here in my app that I have prepared, then the subscribe button here would be such a filled button. And as you've probably already noticed, a filled button is usually the most prominent action a user could take on a specific screen. So the subscribe button just stands out the most out of all these button types. And when it comes to such prominent buttons, there is one major rule about this, and that is that you should not overuse them on your screen. So these filled buttons should really only be used for the final action a user could take. For example, if they want to save a note where they have entered data for before, or if they just want to subscribe to a specific uh, subscription, or just if they need to confirm something that has quite a big impact on uh, the user experience. But what you shouldn't do is, for example, have a list of items where each item has such a filled button to let the user do some form of action. And if you take a look at the Material 3 website, where also all these guidelines are actually listed, you will see so many different guidelines which you need to stick to when you create these buttons. So every little piece of spacing here is documented there, how these texts should be arranged, how the corner radius should be. But if you actually just use these button Material 3 composables as they are, then you can't really do much wrong. So the Google team already encoded all these different main guidelines into these main composables here. You can, of course, change it. And then you need to look into the guidelines what, uh, what you should consider. But if you don't change anything at all, then you can be sure uh, that uh, this will still follow the main guidelines. So if we take a look here, for example, um, then we can change quite a bunch of uh, parameters here. Modifier should be set explanatory. Enabled is used to just enable or disable the button so the user can click on it or not click on it. And then it gets interesting here. You can change the shape of this button, but then you likely won't adhere to the Material 3 guidelines anymore because they say the button should have rounded corners. Of course, if you want an app with maybe um, sharp corners, then this changing this is totally fine. But then it's not really about building a Material 3 app, but rather an app with your own uh, kind of design style. So I would personally leave this out and not change the shape, same as the button colors. So you can see we can change the colors with button defaults dot um, button colors, this one here. You can see there is, for each different type of button, there is a different color set. And we can say button colors for this normal button. And in here, we can then set the container color, so the color of the background of this button. Content color would be the color for the text or any icons. Disable container color would be if the uh, button is disabled. And the disabled content color is for the text when it's disabled. But these are already set to the right uh, material colors by default. You can see there are default values. Um, so you will have these material theme, color scheme, 
You have tons of different theme colors here in your uh, Material 3 color scheme, and these buttons already use the right colors of that scheme to um, stick to these Material 3 guidelines. So you don't really need to change these colors as well. And the same actually counts for the rest of these arguments. So elevation is something I wouldn't change. We'll get into that with the next button type. The border is something I wouldn't give a Material button content padding as well. It already has content padding. Uh, interaction source is just to um, intercept click events and the content is what we use the text for here. But let's get to the next button type and in which scenarios we should use that one. And that will be the elevated button. As the name says, this button has a shadow. And if we give this one a, te um, yeah, a text here, for example, add to cart, which I've also done here, this is the elevated button. So let's now think about when you should use this elevated button over this filled button. You notice that in dark theme, this is a little bit less prominent than this fill button, actually quite less prominent. Let's also try this out in a light theme by switching the theme here. Then you can see it's still less prominent, but you now can also see the shadow behind this button. And the only real use case where I would use such an elevated button is if you have to place this button on other content, for example, an image, which could make it hard to find this button. So let's imagine you have some kind of um, image with a light background, or rather with a background of your filled button so that your filled button wouldn't really stand out on that image. So if you would have a purple image and this um, purple subscription button, then the user would likely not find this button. So that is why you use a button with elevation so that it's just a little bit more highlighted on uh, content like an image. But I would personally not use these elevated buttons for um, yeah, just saving something, for confirming something, for buying something. For these, I would just use the normal filled buttons. But you also notice that I've put in an icon here, which we don't have in our code right now. We can very easily do this for all these button types. So putting an icon is not only for elevated buttons, but you can do this with all these button types, or at least for um, these buttons that have a real shape. Uh, these text buttons, I would not uh, use an icon with these, but for the rest of these, that's absolutely fine. And there are some uh, things you need to stick to when you use an icon. Let's uh, paste an icon composable here. We need to use an image vector, which is um, icons.outline, for example, that add, and a content description, just add to cart or so. And now when you use such an icon, the Material 3 guidelines say that you need to give this a size of 18 dp exactly. So modifier.size 18 dp, because that's not the default of icons. We can hit Alt Enter to import dp. And there also needs to be exactly 8 dp of spacing between icon and text. So we add a spacer with a width of 8 dp. And if we then launch this on our device, it will look exactly the same as before. Wait a little moment until this is built. And there we go. And now this button is looking exactly as before, and we stick to all these Material 3 guidelines. So till now, we've covered buttons which are very prominent on the screen and should definitely not be overused. But what if you actually want to use some more buttons on your screen? And then we get to so-called tonal buttons. So to uh, filled tonal button, actually. Obviously, they also have an on-click lambda, and all these other parameters for these buttons are actually the same as for the normal filled buttons. Um, so I won't talk about these here in uh, detail again, since I've already done that. And we can then give this another text here of, for example, open in browser. So you can just use those if you need to show multiple buttons on a screen, maybe one button per list item, and you need to open a specific bookmark in your browser, for example. So typically for actions that don't have a huge impact on the user experience, but do something the user definitely notices. And if we launch this, then you will also see how these buttons will look like. I've already opened them or shown you them here, um, but they are basically uh, the same as these filled buttons, just with a less prominent color. So they don't stand out as much as these normal filled buttons here. And then we also have outline buttons, which are pretty much the same as total buttons, but even a little bit less prominent. So if that is still too prominent for your use case, then you can use outline buttons, which you can create here. Outline button on click, and we have a text that says something like back, so just if there is some kind of action which is not very prominent, like if you have some onboarding process here, for example, and you want to allow the user to go back to the previous step, then you can use an outline button for that. Or you can also use outline button for things that you just don't want to make too prominent to the user. So a typical scenario is if you have some kind of intro screen where the user can either log in or register a new account, 
typically what uh, websites or what apps want is they want to really highlight the option to create a new account to encourage the user to really do that since otherwise new users might not really find that option how they can now get started using the app but on the other hand if you're a user who already has an account then they usually also know how to use the app so they will choose the uh, less prominent action with an outline button which they can use to just log in so in that case you would then have such a um, normal fill button here with create a new account for example and then such an outline button below that says something like um, login or i have an existing account something like this if we now launch this then you will see the effect of this right here you can see this is less prominent but it's still something that users who already know how to use the app will easily find Yet this action here is actually um, clearly highlighted to new users. In these cases, so if you have two of these buttons on top of each other, I would make sure though um, that both buttons have the same width. But there is one last button type which I want to go into. Let's uh, move this outline button down again. Uh, let's revert that, right this. And there is a last button type, which is a text button. And I'm sure you know this if you are using Google Apps we can give this just a text and this won't have any container color. So for example, learn more. You've seen this before in my little demo example. If we launch this, then you will see, okay, learn more. This is just a text button. You can see if we, we hover over it and click it, then we still get the normal button shape, but it's not really prominent. This is by far the, the, the least prominent button out of these five. So I would just use these if there is some kind of clickable thing, which is very unlikely the user will press it though. So if you just have a list of items and the user can press learn more to maybe open a website, it's very unlikely the user will click that every single time they are on the screen. So I would just use this uh, text button here to make it the least prominent. So as you're seeing, choosing the right button type here is really not only about how it looks like for your app, but much more to intentionally lead the attention of the user to specific parts of your app. Because imagine you would do this wrong, then this can really mean financial damage for apps. If you would, for example, highlight a back button here with such a filled button to really highlight this as the prominent action on the screen and use such a back button, such an outline button with um, the option to subscribe to a paid subscription, then the user is much more likely to press the highlight button so the filled button to go back than actually purchasing your product and that is why it's so important to stick to these guidelines in the next video i will talk about text fields and all these different options we can configure there and that we will go step by step through all these material three ui components so that after watching this playlist you really know how to build a solid app with a solid user experience and if you like jetpack compose and also like to build android uis with that then i got a little gift for you because with jetpack compose as cool as that is there are so many traps you can step into, so many mistakes you can do that mess up the performance of your app. And I've summarized the 20 biggest mistakes you can do with Jetpack Compose and also how you can fix these in one PDF, which you can get for free. You'll find the link to that PDF down below in this video's description. Thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video of this playlist. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.